for indications where immobilization of the wrist and thumb joint is required, for example, scaphoid fractures. Define the position of the limb before the start of application. Thumb and index finger opposing, wrist in slight dorsal flexion and neutral ulnar radial deviation. This will give the patient an indication of which position he has to maintain the limb. Take a double thumb length of 2.5 cm or 1 inch width of stockinette and cut. Choose appropriate width of stockinette that will fit snugly but does not constrict the patient's arm. Measure the length from elbow to fingers, add another 15 cm or 6 inches and cut. Pick up the thumb stockinette, make a cut into the piece and slide it over the thumb. Take the arm stockinette and measure where to place the thumb hole and make a little cut with scissors. Roll up the arm stockinette before applying onto the limb to prevent sliding pressure during application. Roll off over the arm. Use additional padding to cover any bony prominences. Now apply one roll of padding starting at the wrist. Wrap twice, then wrap around the thumb. Go through the web space twice and work an approximate overlap of 50%. Moving proximally, wrap the padding around the wrist and lower arm. Make a small cut into the arm stockinette at the distal end of the index finger. It's recommended to wear protective gloves before applying the plaster of Paris cast. Select appropriate width of the plaster of Paris bandage. Fold the bandage into six layers at the length needed to fit the patient. Pick up the bandage in a zigzag shape. Activate the splint by dipping into cool water, holding the ends and maintaining the splint fold. Remove from water and gently squeeze to drain. Straighten out the splint and run it over the edge of the bucket to smooth and dispose of surplus water. Apply the splint onto the patient's arm. Make a cut into the splint to allow it to be wrapped around the patient's scaphoid and thumb. Fold back any surplus and gently smooth down. To secure the splint, wrap with a bandage starting at the wrist, at first going proximally. Overlap the bandage by 50%. Continue wrapping now going distally, going twice around the thumb and wrist. Cut the bandage. Ask the patient to gently put the tips of their thumb and index finger together. Then mould and smooth the cast down. Fold back the stockinettes, first at the proximal end of the arm then the distal end of the thumb and lastly the distal end of the arm, sliding the thumb through the small cut made earlier. Soft edges protect the skin and provide comfort for the patient. Using a further bandage, start applying at the wrist and wrap twice through the web space and around the thumb. Proceed proximally, overlapping the bandage by 50%. 
check the desired range of motion at any points that may cause irritation or pressure. After approximately 3 to 5 minutes, the splint is set and the patient can be released. After 24 hours, the splint is fully set.